But here's a story that I heard <clears throat> recorded uh, from a rabbi, Manus Friedman. Manus Friedman is a very successful and talented speaker and about educator in general. And um, in addition to being a very nice person, a very devoted person. <clears throat> and so he told a story. And the story goes like this. I heard the story from him. I hope I, I remember everything. It says one day when he was, before he was married, which that must be 60 years ago, something like that. So he was a young fellow learning in 770. 770, that's the headquarters and also was the yeshiva, the place of learning, the, the Talmudic activity, what they call the Talmud the acti uh, Academy of the Lubavitcher Rebbe in Brooklyn. So he was wandering around, <clears throat> wandering around. He was wandering around over there and he saw that there were young men like him, also pupils, and they were cleaning out this room. They were cleaning out a room. So he said, what are you fellows doing? You know, can I help you? you were... So I said, yeah, this is a room. It's just got all these, you know, cabinets in it. And we're cleaning it out. It's just not being used. It hasn't been used for you know, a long time. And we're cleaning it out, dusting it out. And maybe we'll make it into a, an office or something. So I said, can I help? They said, yeah. So he started helping, working. And all of a sudden, there fell from on top of one of these cabinets, there were these high sort of file cabinets. And there fell a like a portfolio sort of a thing. And in it were original letters from the Rebbe, answers from the Rebbe. So all the boys thought, listen, you know, this is a private thing. Maybe we shouldn't look at it. On the other hand, maybe not. I mean, if it's here, it must be for the public. Maybe not. Anyway, their curiosity overcame their hesitation. And they found all sorts of, they, they, they invented all sorts of, uh, of, of reasons why it was okay to do and everything. And maybe it was, it was okay. Anyway, so they read the letter. They opened it up and they read the letter. What was the letter? The letter said it was written and, and it had the Rebbe's answer on it also. The letter was written by a Chabad person that he, a, a Chabad person, maybe was one of the emissaries of the Rebbe, a Shliach, anyway. So he said, now I have to remember, I have to get this thing written properly. I have to get this properly. Yeah. So there was a person in his congregation that was uh, in, in, in the congregation that was uh, on, on the border of being an observant Jew. It was sort of an observant Jew. And he knew people that were not observant Jews at all. And there were some of them that were even against Judaism Jews. But nevertheless, the rabbi was a nice person and he was friendly with everybody. So one of them was making Hanukkah to buy it. They bought a new house. And they were moving into the house. And this was the opportunity. You could put mezuzahs on the door of the house and make a party in the house of the inauguration of the house. It's called Hanukkah to buy it. So yeah. And then there was someone else that said, you know what? I am finishing a Sefer Torah. I, I'm hoping I'm getting this thing right. Maybe it was only the Sefer Torah. But in any case, it, it's not an essential thing. So I'm finishing a Sefer Torah for the honor of my father who passed away. We can put the whole thing together. We can. There's going to be mezuzahs on the door. And there's going to be this new Sefer Torah we're going to write. And it's in the honor of my father. And we can invite, you know, this non-religious person who's moving into the house. We'll make the whole party for them. And that will make them come closer to Judaism. It'll be a wonderful thing. So they said, okay. This was written in the letter, right? So he said, so we made this party. And um, all of a sudden, the father of this non-religious Jewish woman who was moving into the new house, he suddenly had a heart attack. 
there was a Sefer Torah there, a brand new Sefer Torah. I guess maybe they had been dancing, who knows what. And he had a heart attack. And among the people that were there was a doctor. And the doctor came and tried to do something. They called an ambulance. By the time the ambulance came, the man had already passed away. As could be understood, it wrecked up the whole store, the, the whole party. But even more, this lady said, what is this? What's going on? This is Torah. This is Judaism. <laughs> we made this wonderful party, and a Jewish party with a Jewish commandment and a Jewish safer Torah and a Jewish... And my father died. You figured that the, everything would protect him. The safer Torah. And this person writes to the Rebbe, and he says... I don't know what to answer. What should I say? So the Rebbe wrote back. The, the, the answer to the Rebbe was written on the side. The Rebbe wrote back that, and first of all, it's a known thing that everyone passes away. And it's always a tragedy. So this woman's father <clears throat> passed away in a place where there was no way to explain it except that his time had come. He was surrounded by mezuzahs and the mezuzahs say Shema Yisrael inside of them. And the last thing a Jew is supposed to say before he passes away is Shema Yisrael. So he was surrounded by mezuzahs in a holy place. He was among friends. <clears throat> it was on a happy occasion. So he died in the best Surrounded there could possibly be. And not only that, there was a doctor. So you knew that the, that the utmost was done for him. No one can be blamed. There wasn't any sort of, of, a, of a improper or lacking something that was missing here. In other words, unfortunately, people die. But this person passed away in the most Jewish, positive way that could possibly be. And so <clears throat> you can be comforted that his death was surrounded by friends in a Jewish atmosphere, a Jewish place, and the, and the utmost was done for him. So no one was guilty, no one was bad. So that was it. That was the answer. So everybody was pretty amazed. You know, this is a pretty amazing answer. You know, pretty good. All of a sudden, they heard a phone ringing in this room, right? And that sort of broke them out of their whole thing. A phone, where's the phone? This room had been not used for, I don't know, five years, however long. And they, they, they moved a couple of cabinets away and the phone just kept ringing and ringing, moved a couple of cabinets away and they dusted, they answered the phone. They dusted the thing off, hello. Says, hello, hello, is this 770? Yes, it is. Says, I've been calling and calling and calling. This is such and such a shliach, one of the representatives of the Rebbe somewhere and he said, listen, I got a big problem. Please take this into the Rebbe. Can you, can you take this into the Rebbe? Write it down. Take it into the Rebbe. I have a very, very big problem. And I have to have an answer immediately. And they said, listen, we're just boys here in the yeshiva. We're just pupils. We've not. He said, I've tried all the other numbers, and they're all busy. It's been busy already for a half an hour. Please do me a favor. Just write it down and give it into one of the Rebbe's secretaries. They said, okay, what is it? So he said, one of the members of my congregation made a big party, a bar mitzvah for his child. Maybe it could be that here, this is where the Sefer Torah came in. And the Sefer, anyways, he made a big bar mitzvah. He made a, and it was a wonderful. And his family came, they were not religion, religious. And this person's father had a heart attack in the middle of all the festivities. And now the doctors are here. I don't remember if the person died or if he didn't die. Write it down. These are the names. With the, and they said, listen, we just got an answer from the Rebbe before you called up. And they read the letter. They read the letter that they had just found. They read it to this emissary of the Rebbe, the Shliach of the Rebbe. And he said, that's the answer to my question. So we see an incredible, <laughs> what they call Hashgacha Pratit an incredible divine working of this thing, which in fact, everything that happens is divine uh, direction. 
but to see it in such a, a, a visible way and for such a positive purpose and that the positivity was revealed immediately, we don't always see. And one of the principles and the goals of Mashiach is that to reveal to us the godliness and the mystery which is in every interaction in the world. That's why we need Mashiach. Now, have a good day. God bless you all. Thank you.